the greatest experiences is not just what Jesus did on the cross. It's the decision that somebody takes upon what Jesus did on the cross. He became the ultimate sacrifice that brought a difference between him and sin, between the life of sin and the newness of life in God. There is a certain life in God that is totally and completely new, that when you tap into that life, it's like you've not existed anywhere. And that is a life where sin has no record of you. Christ is the root, he's the source of your life. When the word saturates your mind, you will speak forth of the word. All you need is to position yourself under the word. If you want to live by the Spirit, the ultimate thing that you need is to be filled and baptized with the Spirit of God. If you want to lead a Spirit-filled life, then you have to be baptized with the Spirit. Uh, like I said, I will speak something in relation to the prophetic maybe something small to explain a little bit of prophecies as we go on in jesus mighty name but today i want to share something so great so let's go to the book of genesis so genesis chapter 1 and verses 3 praise the lord jesus actually i may speak more about just this scripture alone I will just only add on a few of them to it. The Bible says here that, And God said, Let there be light, praise the Lord. And there was light. <clears throat> Hallelujah. The Bible says, Let there be light. And there was light. And it goes ahead to say, And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness, and uh, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Praise Jesus. My name, my main emphasis to this scripture is the the part where God is creating light. Today I want to speak about this kind of light. I know I've spoken uh, lots of sermons about it, but I feel I want to speak something more concerning this light, praise Jesus, concerning this light. Now, when we go back to Genesis, the Bible says that, um, and God said, let there be light. Now, beloved, God did not create this light, but the Bible says he spoke this light. He spoke it like anything else. So in other words, his form of creation was more to speech. He did not just mold it. He did not just, you know, imagine it. But the Bible says, and God spoke this light. And he said, let there be light. And the scriptures show us that, and then the light was. Praise the Lord Jesus. Now we all know that God is light. God is light. Um, when you go to Genesis still, the, the, the first verse, when the Bible says, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the Bible says, and the earth was without form, praise Jesus, and the earth was without form, and then the Bible says, and the Spirit of God moved, hovered upon the surface of the deep. So, the first thing that happens even before anything is created is commanded into existence was the spirit of god that hovered upon the surface of the desolate the surface of the voidness you know the surface of the darkness so so god was present before anything ever existed but it, even in his presence we see that the first thing he speaks into existence was light in other words God spoke himself into existence before anything physical was made. Sometimes when we read about this kind of light, 
we tend to imagine and think that oh probably this is the light that is of the sun this is the light that is of the moon maybe this is the light of the stars no when you read downwards in the scriptures you realize that all those other forms of light were created later on but there was this main light and the bible says that god just to, to this kind of light god just commanded it god just said let there be light praise the lord now you would ask yourself what is the essence of this light why why would god in the first place create light was it just for visibility praise the lord jesus now like i said this light was god himself now how do we understand it in the next phrase still of genesis chapter 1 and verses 3 for those that have joined in in the next phase of the the scripture the bible says and god saw the light praise jesus in other words god saw the reflection of himself god felt that his presence was now made manifest amidst the earth and then the bible says and then he separated he divided this very light from darkness praise jesus he divided the light from the darkness he divided the light from the darkness we all know that light represents god in the scriptures but at the same time we know that even darkness represents the devil but in the other in in another way we know that light represents knowledge illumination and we know that darkness represents ignorance praise the lord so in the very first place god had to cast light onto the earth he had to cast a certain form of knowledge that could sustain anything that he would place in the earth after speaking light into existence i hope somebody is following what i'm trying to speak here god had to cast a certain form of knowledge a knowledge of himself let me tell you something the earth had to first of all understand who was going to command everything else before everything was put into existence so god had to present himself onto the earth if you go through the scriptures more so in the book of ezekiel where i really don't want to open in details probably we shall discuss it some other time we understand that when the devil was cast down actually even jesus mentioned this in the book of matthew that i saw him fall down from the heaven like lightning when the devil was cast down he was cast down unto the earth and that is the explanation of the darkness and the voidness that we see now in genesis if you're good bible readers you try to dig up deeper to understand where this darkness comes from but actually it's not what i intend to explain right now but let me speak something small about it so the darkness we see was not just the darkness because of absence of light this is the darkness that was degraded from the same light it was remember the devil was lucifer in the start and he was so highly exalted in the heavenly so when he falls down the bible says he falls like an angel of light but when he falls down he could not be sustained with the same glorious light which was heavenly so he falls and all he can display is darkness praise the lord Th these are many scriptures you can look up them in ezekiel but i'll try to get them probably share them in the groups so that you can dig deeper through them so yes i was saying that he falls down into the earth and the bible shows us that then darkness covered the surface of the deep and that is why in Genesis, the Spirit of God firstly hovered upon the surface. He took full authority, he took full power upon the surface of the deep. And then later we see out of his fullness of authority, he commands light into existence. Praise the Lord. He commands light into existence. Hallelujah. And then... The next portion of that scripture that I really want us to get so deep into is that part where God now says, and he divided light from darkness. I was meditating so deeply and the Holy Spirit opened my eyes to Acts chapter, chapter 9 and verses, verses 2, if we can get there. The experience of Paul uh, 
uh, on the road to Damascus. Yeah, it is Acts chapter 9 and verses 3. Let's get there. So this was the experience of, uh, thank you very much. It was the experience of Paul on his way to Damascus. The Bible says, and as he journeyed, he came nigh Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. Praise God. And the Bible says, and he fell to the earth and had a voice saying unto him, So, so, why persecute, persecutest thou me? This was the voice of the Lord Jesus. We all know that. And the Bible says in verses 5, And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Praise the Lord. It is hard of thee to kick against the pricks. Now, when Paul got in contact, with this kind of light, the light which I've explained to you in Genesis as God himself. When Paul got in contact with this kind of light, we see that the next thing in the scriptures, his eyes became became blind. He lost his sight. Now the question would come in, why would this man become blind after encountering the glorious light of God? When you read through actually the scriptures in verses 6, the Bible says, And he trembling astonished said, Lord, why wilt thou have me do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told to thee what thou must do. Praise the Lord. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And the Bible says in verses 8, And Paul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. And in verses 9, the Bible says, And he was three days without sight, and neither did he eat nor drink. Praise Jesus. Now, I pose the question here, and I ask you that, why would the same experience of this light make a man blind now listen to this child of god you can never know how dark this world is not until you come and approach this world in the highest dimension of the light of the spirit that is why the bible says jesus is the light of the world praise the lord when you read through john chapter john chapter um chapter one where the Bible speaks about the word, and then John chapter 1, verses 5, the Bible says, And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Praise the Lord Jesus. And uh, when you read through down here, the Bible talks about the light which comes out of the light. So, like I was saying that we are the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. But you cannot know how much darkness is in the world, not until your light is made manifest. Now this drives us back to what I started from when I explained that in the beginning, God had to create light. Not because he couldn't command every other creature into existence, but because this light was powerful enough to sustain everything that was going to be created. Praise Jesus. It was so powerful enough to sustain every creation. And it was not going to just sustain this creation with the earthly life, but it was going to sustain this creation with the life of God. How do I know that? When you read through uh, John chapter 1 verses, for the Bible says, In him was life, and that very life was the light of men. You cannot separate the life, Zoe, life of God from his light. You cannot separate it. Praise Jesus. Where there is the life of God, there is the light of God as well. Praise Jesus. Where the life of God is, there is his light. And where his light is, there is his life. Now, before the fall of man, I want us to understand something here. There is a certain life of God that sustained everything that was put into creation. 
We all know that everything in the Garden of Eden was so filled with the life of God. Trees would not die. Humanity was not meant to die. If it would get older, then after some time it would only get younger and gain, you know, start life again. Nothing was meant to die because the life that came through the light in the very start was so powerful enough to preserve. We all know that the light representing knowledge as well, knowledge carries the ability to preserve things. That's why the Bible says without knowledge, people perish. Men cast restraint. Praise the Lord Jesus. Without knowledge, people perish. So in the same way, when you have knowledge, when you illuminated with the light of God, you carry the Zoe, you carry the life of God in you. And that is what was in the first life. So when the fall of man comes, darkness hovers upon the earth again, and it hovers upon the earth because of sin. But then thanks be to God that later on in the scripture we see that in the New Testament, Jesus comes in. And when Jesus comes in again, the Bible introduces, introduces him as the word of God and the light of God and the very life of God. That is why in John 10.10, 10, the Bible tells us that he is life. And when you receive him, you receive life and life abundantly. He came to give life, life abundantly. Because you cannot separate the light of God from the life of God. Now, there's some great mystery I want us to learn here. I know it's already time. Uh, I intended this meeting to be so brief. But since you came in late, I will um, increase by just a few minutes to explain something here. And then later I close with the prophecies. I was saying that there's something beautiful I want you to understand. Every principle that God has used to put the earth into existence, you can use as well to create the world you want to see. I want to repeat this. I want to repeat this for somebody. Every principle that God has used to put things into existence you can use the same principle to create the life and the world that you want to live or you want to see. Praise the Lord Jesus. When God illuminated the earth and then through that light, he created everything. You are now, the Bible says, the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. Maybe you didn't understand what I said. Do you know that every great invention that you're seeing in the current modern world has come through a certain revelation of knowledge. And that knowledge has been cast upon men because they accessed certain portals of light. No man gets a world changing idea and they have not tapped into a certain realm of knowledge. These are the same ideas even we believers are using. I was thinking about this gentleman, Zuckerberg. Right now, I mean, do you know how many people's lives have been lost and also changed through Facebook? It was just an idea that pops out in some individual. Praise the Lord. But it's so unfortunate that some of these guys know how these things work. And they give themselves wholly unto these things. And then a believer is so much settled for less. Let me tell you, you cannot carry this light in you and you live a substandard life. Never. No man gets into connection with these highest principles of the heavenly and you live a lowly life. When you see that something is not working in your life, before you want God to work out a miracle, principles precede miracles. You better understand the principles by which you want that miracle to happen. And one of the principles is the principle of illumination before any creation happens. Before God commanded, I mean, 
God is God sovereign. If he wants to speak something into existence, he can command that thing into existence. But he said, no, let me speak. Let me follow the protocol. Let me command light into existence. And with the existence of light, the Bible says, and then he spoke the rest of the things. And then he commanded the, the waters and he separated the waters. He commanded the herbs of the ground. He commanded the fish in the water. He commanded the folds of the air. He commanded things in the firmament of the heavens. He commanded, I mean, the herbs and everything else. He spoke all these things because he knew there is a pattern. And it's so annoying and frustrating that we are believers that carry the fullness of this knowledge, but yet we probably do not give in ourselves wholly to the understanding of these principles. Now, why am I speaking these things as I conclude with this message? The Spirit of God spoke to me concerning 2023 and he told me, Samuel, you know, I, I was asking him, what are you saying about 2023? And he said, 2023 is going to be a time of a new age. I'm still taking time to understand this, but at least I've already carried the basics of the message. I was like, okay, what do you mean by a new age? He told me, there's going to be a great advancement in technology. There's going to be a great advancement in a lot of things of the earth. When I talk about advancement, beloved, forget about these things of upgrading phones and here you, 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 you've heard about iPhone 14 and I mean that is just upgrading. When we talk about advancement, you're about to hear the most scaring things. Some of these things are coming for the good. With clarity, I've, I, I heard him speak that. And he said, some of these things are coming for the good, but some of these things are satanic and are coming to destroy humanity. Then I remembered in 2020, in the COVID season, the Lord spoke to me and he said that there is a great invasion of technology that is coming, but I'm giving chance to the church to take so part into these invasions. In other words, I want the church to take part in this. That if they are to hear some of the, you know, the, the highest technologies that are gonna come up in the world, whether in the medical, whether in the monetary systems, whether in, in any kind of systems, it should be in the power of the church. Because if the church holds this, kind of advancement then it's going to be used to fulfill the mission and the purposes of god on the earth praise jesus so the lord was telling me that it's going to be a new a time of a new age and he firstly spoke about the technology and all that stuff but there is a lot to next year that is going to also show us how the rapture of the church is so near than ever before than ever before some of us in these countries let me tell you when you hear about things like microchips you think this is just you know something that is is in is in plan or will come after the rapture let me tell you the truth people pay stuff glossary with microchips people get into trains and they don't need to they don't need a card they don't need to book a ticket they just need to put their you know their hand and it's swiped on and they're paying this stuff. I mean, some of these things are deeply satanic. And if the church is not advancing to a certain level, even in this new time of the new age, the Lord spoke to me, where a lot of satanism is gonna be made manifest, but at the same time, the glory of the Lord will be shown greater. But if the church does not position itself, we are gonna lose a position in the rest of the coming years. And that is why in this year you're seeing a global recession, which is coming after a pandemic. And probably someone is like, we've heard of a global recession. We don't know what is coming next year. I mean, humanity is now at the edge of what is coming next. What is coming next? But as a believer, you better position yourself right now to allow the Holy Spirit. I, I don't know, sometimes when people listen to these messages, they're like, what is he speaking about? I'm not even known at a village level. 
you don't need to be known for heaven's sake. Your spirit can keep a community. The Bible says because of one righteous man, God can save a city. All you need is to pray. All you need is to find your position in God. That even as the world is evolving with all these things, you will still stick to the mandate and the place that God has called you to be in until you meet the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. It is not yet time to give up or to give in to anything. Praise the Lord. So with this message, I felt uh, we need to allow God to open up our eyes more because there are things that can only be opened up to our spirits when we allow the light of God to saturate in us. To saturate in us. Praise the Lord. There are things that can only be opened up when we give in ourselves to God. The Bible says the entrance of his word is light. The entrance of his word is light. Some of you want to become the best doctors, the best engineers. Let me tell you, just think about some of these things. They are so humbling. I mean, they're so humbling. Elon Musk right now plans to take in, in the next, is it about 25 years, a million people by 2050, a million people to Mars. And what is in the brain of such a man? How does he think? Do not accept to live at the edge of receiving, but accept to live at the place where God is illuminating your sight to these realities. Praise Jesus Christ. Do not accept to just live at the edge of receiving. May God illuminate your sight to these realities. That as men in the world are advancing in these things, your spirit shall be carried as well in the same experiences. Praise God. That as men are growing, being lifted up, your spirit will be lifted up. Today you can fellowship with God. I assure you, listen to me. You can fellowship with God and you get a billionaire's idea. But sometimes God looks down on earth and is like, my children would only desire money for rent, would only desire money to look nice, which is okay because you give glory to God when you're smart and when you're living independent. But wait a minute. What if you desire for something greater than what money can buy? And those are the people God wants to position for the next world, for the next advancements of the earth. To an extent, when something has to happen in the earth, people will have to consult a believer. People will have to consult you. But they're consulting you not because you have the idea, but because you're filled with the knowledge of God. Praise Jesus! It's almost getting to 15 minutes past the time we intended to stop this meeting. I want to thank you for joining in. For those that have come in late, I'll try to see that we you get the recording of this meeting. Praise the Lord. Otherwise, this is uh, our second Zoom meeting. Ever since we started, uh, we, we started again. And I'm, I'm requesting that... You, you you invite someone next time. Monday we shall still have the same. And uh, as time goes on, we are organizing to have two meetings in a week. But for now, we are having it only on Monday. Praise God. Only on Monday. And uh, the time remains the same. 6.30 uh, Central European time. Uh, and then, is it 8.30 East African time? Praise God. So I hope you've been blessed by this message. I'm only praying that God will open you up to something greater. Praise the Lord Jesus. Otherwise, I thank you for attending this meeting. Um, and we are going to be praying right now in Jesus' mighty name that the words that you've heard will create a certain knowledge in you. Oh, I feel God is about to do something on earth. But believers... Where are we standing in what God is about to do? Shall we pray in Jesus' mighty name? Father, we give you praise. We give you glory for this wonderful and beautiful time. Precious Holy Spirit, I thank you for this meeting. 
I thank you because you've opened up our eyes to the realities of understanding your light. And Lord, I'm praying that by this very knowledge and revelation, we shall be illuminated in our hearts and illuminate the world around us, Lord. Uh, people's lives will not remain the same because we are carriers of the light and we are the light of the world. The city set on a hill can not be hid in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for the year 2023. I thank you for the word of prophecy you've given us. It is a year where we are entering a new age, a new time, Lord. I'm praying that you position us so deeply in Jesus' mighty name. I feel the Spirit of God wants me to tell you something more about the changing of the currencies. You are going to see many currencies changing and you're going to see many currencies united. Praise the Lord. In the coming year 2023. And in the exchange of these currencies, most of the currencies are going to get to, most of the nations will start using gold in the same year. But you're going to see also an uplifting of cryptocurrencies. Praise the Lord. So a lot of things are coming in, but I'm praying in the name of Jesus that uh, as we get into that time of the new age, God will give us the wisdom to handle. God will give us the wisdom to handle. God will give us the wisdom to handle every change that is coming in in jesus mighty name praise god so um i wait for you next monday thank you for attending um those that missed out i will see how to forward the link to the recording that we've just had otherwise god bless you see you next time i love you so much from this part of the world i miss you my dear ugandan friends bye bye see you next time